What's up? This is Alex, DJ Couch King, and welcome to episode number six in my beginner's course on Ableton Live 10. In the last episode, we talked about how to record and edit audio. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use the built-in instruments as well as VST plugins and instruments inside Ableton Live 10. Just like the last video, I'm going to break this down into four parts. In the first part, we'll go over how to set up the built-in instruments in Live, as well as load presets. In the second part, I'll show you how to set up and get VSTs working. In the third part, we'll load those VSTs onto some tracks. And in the fourth part, we'll go over some of the basics of using MIDI tracks inside Ableton Live. So let's jump into the software and start with part number one. I've opened up Ableton Live and I've created a new set. For this tutorial, we will only be working with MIDI tracks. We can delete these two audio tracks by clicking on the label and pressing the delete key. Check out video number five in this series if you wanna learn how to record audio in Ableton Live 10. Let's start by loading up one of Ableton Live's built-in instruments. To find the built-in instruments, go to the browser on the left-hand side of your screen and click the tab that says Instruments. Depending on which version of Ableton Live you have, you're gonna see different options here. I'm using Live 10 Suite, but don't worry if you're using Lite, Intro, or Standard. I'm only going to use instruments that are in all the versions for this tutorial. All versions of Ableton Live come with the drum rack, so let's start with that. There are three easy ways to load instruments inside Ableton Live. You can drag and drop right onto a MIDI track, or you can drag and drop right into the empty area, and it will create a new MIDI track with that instrument on it. Or the easiest way, I think, is just to click on a MIDI track and double click on the instrument that you want, and that loads it right onto the track. Once you've loaded the instrument, it's gonna show up in the device editor down here on the bottom of the screen. If you don't see the device editor, you can click this arrow on the bottom right hand of the screen, or you can hold down Shift and press the Tab key on your keyboard to switch between the device editor and the clip editor. Now we can load a preset by clicking on this hot swap button right here on the top right of the drum rack. You can find all the drum rack presets that come with your version of Ableton Live by clicking on drums or going down to places and clicking on packs. Every version of Ableton Live comes with the core library, so I'm going to load up a drum kit from the core library. Click on this arrow next to it and open up the folder that says drums, and then I'm going to load the 606 core kit. Now I can come down here and exit out of hot swap mode by clicking on the little orange X. Now you can play the drum kit you loaded on your MIDI keyboard or controller or you can play it on your computer keyboard by activating the computer MIDI keyboard on the top right. Now let's look at how we can get our VSTs working inside the Ableton Live Preferences. Start by going to Options and clicking on Preferences. If you're on a Mac, this will be under the menu labeled Live. Go to the tab labeled Plugins and make sure that you have Use VST2 Plugin Custom Folder set to On. And if you're using any VST3 plugins, make sure you also have those options on as well. If you're on Mac, go ahead and turn on audio units also, but be aware that if you're collaborating with anyone who's using a PC, they're only gonna have access to VST instruments. When you're installing VSTs, make sure to install them all to the same folder. Ableton Live will only let you specify one folder for VST plugins. I've installed mine to my C drive in a folder I created called VST. I also separated the 32 and 64-bit plugins into separate folders. Ableton Live 10 will only work with 64-bit plugins. Make sure you read the system requirements for any plugins that you want to install. Once you've told Live where to find all your plugins, press this rescan button. And once it's done scanning, go ahead and close out of this window. Now all your plugins should show up here in the browser, and we can load a plugin onto our other MIDI track. Now that we've told Live where our plugins are installed, we can go to the Plugins tab in our browser and start loading up instruments. VST2 plugins show up under the drop-down labeled VST, and VST3 plugins show up under the one labeled VST3. You can also save built-in instruments and plugins to your collections to access the ones you use frequently much faster than going through all these menus. All you have to do is right-click and select a color from the context menu. I've labeled these ones instruments and effects. You can label them whatever you want. You can download this Helm VST from the website in the description below. Helm is 100% free to download and it sounds awesome. There are tons of great free VSTs out there, so don't feel like you need to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars to get new instruments. If you want, you can go ahead and pause the video here, go to the Helm website, and download it before continuing this tutorial. Loading a VST instrument works the same as loading a built-in instrument. I'm just gonna click on the other MIDI track and then double click on Helm and that will open up the plugin window. Plugins will also show up down here in the device editor. To edit the plugins or go through the presets, click on this little wrench icon, and that will open up the plugin window. To load presets in Helm, come up over here to the top left and click between these two arrows, right here by where it says init. This will bring up the preset browser. 
Let's go ahead and load a base patch. So I'm gonna come over here and click on where it says base, use my mouse wheel to scroll down and find the one that says SF base picked. Then I can come over here and click done. Ah, I like that one, sounds nice and smooth. Now that we have a drum kit and a bass synth loaded, let's make a short piece of music using our MIDI tracks. Recording MIDI works the same as recording audio. Go back to the last video if you need a refresher on how that works. Instead of recording for this tutorial, we're going to draw our notes in the clip editor. Let's start by making a drum beat. First, go to the top of the MIDI track with the drums on it and create a new clip. Just right click in an empty cell and select insert MIDI clip. This should bring up the clip editor in the bottom of the screen, but if it doesn't for some reason, we already know that we can use shift and tab to switch back and forth between the device editor and the clip editor. All the names of the samples in our drum rack will show up on the left side of the clip editor. To audition these sounds, click on the little headphone icon with your mouse. And then you can click on the keys to hear what each sample sounds like. Now we can start drawing in notes by double clicking in some of these empty areas on the grid. You can also use the pencil tool by coming up and clicking on the pencil up in the top right of the screen or using the B key on your keyboard. You can draw in several notes at a time really quickly and easily like that. I'm gonna go ahead and put in some hi-hats on some eighth notes here. I'm gonna use the closed hi-hat over here. Then I'm going to turn the pencil tool off by pressing the B key on my keyboard again. And now I'm back to a normal mouse cursor. I can use the mouse to select any of the notes on the grid and drag to move them around. Let's hear what that sounds like. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the metronome off since we're not recording. We can also move notes around in time by clicking on them and using the left and right arrows on our keyboard. We can also change the sample that's playing by clicking on a note and using the up and down arrows on our keyboard. Let's add one more symbol. And now let's double the length of this loop by clicking on the button over here on the left that says duplicate loop. And we'll remove that symbol we added on the second bar by double clicking on it to delete it. Now we have a two bar drum loop. Now let's create a clip on our bass track. When you're using a third party VST instrument, instead of the drum sample names, we're just gonna see the piano keys on the left hand side. Note C shows us which octave we're in. And since we're writing a bass part, I'm gonna use my mouse wheel and scroll all the way down to C1. Depending on the preset and the plugin you're using, you'll just have to audition the notes to see what they sound like. As I'm hovering my mouse over the left side, you can see it shows me which note I'm actually playing on the keyboard. So let's go ahead and draw in some bass notes. Now if I come up here and click play on the bass clip that I just created, both of the clips will start playing in time. Now let's double the length of the bass loop by clicking on duplicate loop. We can change the pitches of a couple of them by clicking on them and using our up and down arrow keys. Now let's play with the rhythm a little bit by clicking on some of the notes and using the left and right arrow keys to move them around in time. And let's hear what that sounds like. We may need to turn down some of the instruments to keep it from clipping the master track. You'll know the master track is clipping when the meter on the right hand side turns red. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn down the bass a little bit. Eh, it might've been a little bit too much. If it's still clipping after you've turned down one of the instruments, you can turn down the drums or any of the other instruments to keep it from clipping on the output. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop here for now, but you can go ahead and keep adding instruments to this and keep playing around and experimenting with it. We'll cover more about writing music with MIDI later on in this series. 
Thanks for checking this video out. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video and you learned something from it, make sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button so you can get the rest of these videos as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. Peace.